Next couple of months will decide if you will be able to retire early. Today, I will be brutally honest because quite frankly, we might not have that much time left before an altcoin season. In this video, I'll explain why an altcoin season might be closer than what people think. We'll discuss how much of your capital should be in the market around these times. We'll create a $20,000 portfolio. And finally, we will do a simulation of what this portfolio had the chance to do in just a couple of months. So make sure to watch the entire video because this video might literally save you this cycle. This is not financial advice. It's important to emphasize that time might be running out. So we're at a point in the market where Bitcoin dominance has been climbing steadily over the last couple of months. Back in May, I predicted that the dominance would top somewhere between 60 to 65% before we would see a rollover. I think these are reasonable dominance targets given that we in December 2021 peaked at around 73%. And this cycle, we have way more altcoins than we had back then, and they are going to absorb some of that liquidity. My thesis hasn't changed. I still think dominance will roll over between this 60 to 65 level. Maybe we're seeing the start of this right now. Time will tell. But what I can say is now is not the time to sit on the sidelines. With the indicators we're seeing right now, the steady uptrend of Bitcoin dominance that has been going on for months, the risk to reward being in the altcoin market is too good to pass up on. So how much should you be in the market? I see completely random numbers thrown out. You should be 70%, 80%, 90 95% in the market. When someone tells you a magical number, be very careful. There is a high chance they don't know nothing about you. They don't know if you have any cash flow. They don't know about your neuroticism, your risk tolerance, how much money you have in crypto compared to your entire net worth, what your goal is, nothing. This is why I ask for this stuff when I review portfolios so that I can give the best advice for you. The only advice that will be true for every market participant is that you should always have stables. There is no such thing as being 100% in the market. You, me, Warren Buffett, no one knows when the bottom is in. So to be 100% in the market is ignorant. Personally, right now, I have about 30% in stables. Maybe you have more, maybe you have less. Even though I have a solid risk tolerance, I have a lot of money allocated to crypto based on my entire net worth. This is why it makes sense for me to still have 30%. My goal is never to fill the bags, but to buy crypto cheap. So moving over to our $20,000 portfolio, one thing that is really important for me to say is that this figure of $20,000 serves as nothing more than a model for a quote unquote normal portfolio. So how are we going to structure this portfolio? We're going to structure it around narratives, gaming, layer one, AI deep in, RWA and memes. As you probably noticed, a narrative is the strongest driver that make an altcoin pump. If the market suddenly decides that gaming is hot, gaming altcoins will pump. Now, traditionally, in previous cycles, all the coins within the gaming sector would have pumped. This cycle, it will be drastically different. There won't be enough liquidity to pump every single one. This is going to put more pressure on us to find the right ones, which we'll talk about in just a second. I strongly recommend limiting yourselves to these narratives. All the other narratives will be tradable if you know what you're doing. When the time comes, I will be making altcoin tier lists for other narratives as well. So make sure to subscribe to my YouTube to not miss those videos. If this is your first cycle or if you're not part of a private group like mine, then I highly suggest just sticking with these narratives. These will still yield good returns. I think a lot of people have been burned this cycle because they do not see the benefits of safety nets. There are three reasons for why safety nets are so damn important. Number one, hedge against market corrections. So first off, why is it a hedge? It is a hedge because the safety net altcoins will typically dip less than the lower caps. Although these still experience corrections, it will not be as dramatic as the lower cap ones. Reason number two, retails blue chip bias. Second reason is that there is a chance, albeit small, that these will perform better than your low cap, even though the safety net picks do not have a 100x potential. There is a chance retail won't be scrolling to 5,000 altcoins to find yours I'm not saying that this will happen. I'm saying there is a chance. And finally, the most important thing, increased overall returns. Now, how can you possibly get more returns by dedicating a chunk of your portfolio to safety net altcoins that won't yield you more than a 10x when there's altcoins out there that can give you 1000x? First part of this ties in with both 0.1 and 2. However, there is something happening in the market right now that I have been talking about for so many months and that is that the safety nets, aka the big caps, move first. Now what you can do is take profit from those big caps 
and rotate that profit into lower caps. Of course, take home some profit as well. Take Render, for instance. Render dipped all the way down to $3.4. Of course, we bought Render at those levels because we recognize that Render is a safety net pick, a blue chip that will recover. Then Render does a 2.5x. We take profit and then rotate those profit into lower caps that are still doing nothing. You see the same thing with Solana and other big caps as well. They are moving and many other lower caps are not moving nearly as much. This is the model I use every single bull run to maximize my gains. And I'm surprised very few people talk about this. Last cycle, I did exactly the same with rotating Cardano into Axie Infinity. That one rotation changed my life. It's Money Flow 101. Therefore, I will always recommend having a safety net. So for our safety nets, we're going to pick one per narrative. The safety net picks are going to account for the majority of your allocations within the narratives. How much is dependent on your risk tolerance? So let's start off with a safety net pick for the layer one. Now this is important. Here you have two options depending on your risk tolerance. You could either go with Ethereum or Solana, or you could go with something like Caspa or Sui. Now keep in mind, Ethereum and Solana are way bigger than Caspa or Sui. If you're picking Ethereum or Solana, you're taking a stance that you are going for a less risky portfolio. Nothing wrong with that. I would steal about 20% of all other narrative allocations, making this allocation bigger. Otherwise, it's not going to make much sense. And of course, Ethereum and Solana are less risky and might have a 3 to 5x from here. Caspa or Sui might have a 10x. However, all of these plays are solid. You're going to pick one of these. Next up, we have RWA. We have a couple of options for our safety net. You could go with something like Ondo. Just be very cautious about the unlock that's happening in January. Please do yourself a favor and save this date. Other than this, you have Pendle, Mantra. Keep in mind that these have ran significantly over the last couple of months, but these are solid safety net picks. All of these should be able to do somewhere between 5 to 10x. Next up is gaming. So for our safety net pick here, it's very obvious. It's going to be Beam. This is by far the best safety net pick with the highest risk to reward ratio. I think pretty much everyone agrees on that. What can Beam do? I think Beam conservatively can do around a 10x even from here. Within AI Deepin, I'm going to present two options. First one is Render. Render is still going to be a giant within the Deepin GPU narrative. There will not be any other GPU project that will surpass Render this cycle. Even though this is a dinosaur play, it has demonstrated that it can perform. It's also on Solana, which will continue to do well this cycle. Another option is Tau. Tau has also demonstrated that it can perform really well. It's a solid AI pick. Both of these have the potential of doing somewhere between 5 to 10x. For memes, we have two market cap brackets similar to our layer ones. First, we have the Pepe, Whiff, and Bong category. They've claimed their spot as top tier. They have solid listings across the board, and they're just waiting for retail to buy their shiny JPEG through the most popular exchanges, including Coinbase, Robinhood, and Binance. Then you have the next bracket, which can still be regarded as a safety net, which are Mogcoin, Brett, and Popcat. These can perform well, but might rely on a bit more recognition, primarily through listings, to claim the spot as a top tier meme coin. They are therefore more risky, but might yield more return. I'd say Pepe, Whiff, and Bonk have around a 5 to 7x, while Popcat, Mogcoin, and Brett might have somewhere between 10 to 15 X. Next up, we're going to talk about mid and low caps. I'm going to go through the best risk reward altcoins and provide some insights into what I think they can do in terms of multipliers. The market caps are going to vary and you will have to play around with the percentages. Maybe you'll include only mid caps or low caps in some narratives, or maybe you'll include both. Don't worry, at the end of the video, I'll show you exactly how I'm structuring our portfolio in our simulation. For layer one, you're going to pick either Elithium or Tectum or both. Both of these plays will most likely do very well. Tectum is both a layer one and layer two with its soft note, and Elithium has a good sharding solution and is proof of less work. I'd say Tectum has a conservative target around 30x, and Elithium has a conservative target around 15 to 20x. You will do just fine with your safety net and these ones right here, whether it be one of them or both. In my opinion, I do not think you need to include a lower cap layer one, as the risk to reward is simply not there for the lower caps. I've heard people talk about sellers. If you feel comfortable investing in this, then be my guest. But for layer one, Elithium and or Tectum will do just fine. For RWA, you're either going to go for prop base or Rilio or both. Both of them have a 30x potential. Same thing applies here. I don't think you need to go lower in market cap. Layer one and RWAs are the only two narratives where we won't go for low caps under 20 million in market cap. Rio and prop base are low enough. 
and they will still provide good returns moving forward. The risk reward for even lower cat ones like WeCoin and LBM is simply not great enough to include them in my opinion. I would much rather focus on allocating to better projects. For gaming, I'd say the best mid to low cap pick here would be Heroes Omavia. I think this is one of those games that have the potential of becoming adopted, where people will actually play this to earn money, similar to what we saw with Axie Infinity. Other mid cap picks could be Naka, Miria, or Big Time. I prefer Mavia. Mavia from today can still do a 20x conservatively. If you want to include a lower cap, I would include something like OTK, Corpo, or the Secret Gem in the VIP Discord. All of these have around 30 to 50x potential conservatively. For AI deep in, no surprise here, you're either going to go for AGI or AI tech as your mid caps. Both of these are solid picks. I have both of them getting a Binance listing eventually. AI tech probably has a 20x conservatively, while AGI might have a 15x conservatively. For lower caps, a solid play could be Ort. Ort has around a 50x conservatively. For memes, you're going to go with either Ponke or Maniki for mid caps. We're blessed with two very solid mid cap meme coins that still have amazing potential. I'm not going to try and predict what these can do, but both of them are billion dollar meme coins. Here, I would include some low caps, maybe even some DJ ones for trading. For low caps, you would be looking at coins between, I'd say, 5 to 100 million. This could be Foxy, could be Nacho, could be Mad. All of these have 30x potential. We're also accumulating low caps in the VIP, and I will also be looking for another gem that I will be bringing in very soon. Okay, so finally, we're going to do a simulation. Here's how my portfolio turned out. Remember, these are only estimates. Now, a simulation of such a good diversified portfolio is going to be extremely hard. So what I am going to do is to give three possible outcomes for the portfolio. First outcome is going to be bearish, second outcome is going to be conservative, and finally a last outcome is going to be bullish. So first, the bearish outcome. In the bearish outcome, it turned out that there was simply not enough liquidity to pump any of our mid to low caps. Retail simply did not have any risk appetite. Do I think this will be the outcome? No, but it's still worth talking about. So the only thing that pumped was our safety net. These altcoins will most likely pump either way, and why I strongly suggest having a safety net. All of them did an average of 7x. Depending on how much you've allocated to your safety net, I'd say somewhere around 60,000 to 80,000 is achievable if you have a good exit strategy. For the conservative outcome, all of our safety net coins did well, and most of our altcoins reached their conservative targets. With exiting perfectly, our conservative portfolio made it to 250,000 to 300,000. Finally, for our most bullish outcome, keyword bullish. Now, this outcome is possible, but everything has to align. You need to rotate and you need favorable market conditions. Here, all of our safety nets did an average of 10x. You rotated some of the gains into lower cap altcoins and all of our altcoins reached their conservative targets. Here, I would say that the bullish target would be something like 600 to 800,000. Keep in mind, if we get an altcoin season like the one we did in 2021, then you could even argue this is more of a conservative estimate. If you want to take part in finding the best low caps moving forward before the altcoin season starts, then join the VIP Discord. We are accumulating both utility and meme coin plays. Some of them are secret low caps that I'm not showing on YouTube. This is my track record for memes. I haven't seen any other YouTuber show you this. So if you were to follow every single one of my calls, you would be up greatly. Keep in mind, we of course invested a lot more in the solid ones like Ponke, Mad, and Maniki than we did with these DGEN ones. The DGENs, I invested somewhere between $20 to $100, given that they were so low in market cap. With Ponke, I invested around $10,000, same with Mad. These are the sort of plays I'm looking for because I have a very good eye for those. The price will increase in December, so you have been warned. Our team also has a technical analysis that makes sure that we buy the bottom on every single coin. You can ask him for any chart analysis you want. Very competent guy. You also get a bunch of courses, including exit strategy, which will be very important moving forward. Compare $49 to other YouTubers, so no wonder the price has to go up. As always, thanks for watching. Take care and stay safe.